Hello, I'm Nicole Wilbert. Welcome back to my channel. And today we are talking all about scenes and the different ways you can outline your scenes. Specifically, I'm giving you eight different ways. This video is going to be the short version. There's going to be a much longer, insanely, obnoxiously long, actually, um, other version that will be coming out in the coming um, days. But for now, let's go through this and the pros and cons. First one, Freytag's Pyramid. This is sort of a classic dramatic structure. Um, it was presented to me in a playwriting class. Basically, it is a triangle where you have exposition, rising action, climax, falling action, and resolution. It's a loose structure, very simple. The pros of it, it's pretty universal. It can be widely applied um, and it's simple. The cons, to me, this doesn't feel like much of a scaffold. It emphasizes exposition and falling action, which if you take them at face value, words that are like not, don't have a lot of tension to me. Um, it's also a little bit more theater oriented and Freytag, Freytag? Um, originally co-opted it or coined it for um, tragedies. So the while it can be applicable anywhere, that was its original use case. Method number two is the story grid, and this is the five commandments of storytelling from the story grid, which are inciting incident, progressive complication, crisis, climax, and resolution. Basically with this one, your inciting incident um, shakes uh, the norm in the scene. You have progressive complications, so things are getting worse, the conflict is escalating until we get to a turning point that leads to a crisis, which is a decision a character has to make. Um, the decision that they make is the climax, so that is them making a decision. Uh, the pros here of the story grid, five commandments for outlining scenes. The focus is on decision making in a scene. That is what that crisis is, and I love this because that helps A, keep your characters active, and B, it provides the vehicle for character development. So basically, you can gauge where a character is on their arc by their decisions. So I like the series of pro pro progressive complications and the turning point. It helps you emphasize change while focusing on conflict and escalation. There's also tons of resources um, on the StoryGrid website and in their books for this with lots of examples, which is always very helpful. For example, I found Freytag harder to find good examples for. Cons for StoryGrid. StoryGrid as a whole is very complex. There's lots of concepts. It can be kind of hard to understand. Um, with the five commandments in general, I find it can be one of the pitfalls can be losing sight of your cause and effect within the scene um, and forgetting to focus on your characters. If you like hearing about scene and scene construction and breaking down chapters and getting into the nitty gritty, I have very exciting news for you. So starting next week, I am starting a new series on my Substack, And the idea is that every week on Monday, I am going to release an analysis of a chapter from a popular book. It could be focused on the scene structure. It could be focused on interiority, on character development within the scene, on a story beat, like introducing allies and opponents, or it could be as simple as like line level, like looking at character descriptions. It's currently only going to be on my Substack, so go over there and check it out. The first one will be published Monday, June 24th, and it is a chapter analysis of Romancing Mr. Bridgerton, which of course is the book that season three of Bridgerton is based on. So very excited for that. And then after that one, I have a couple that are from the Inheritance Games, basically looking at beginnings. And then after that, there's just more and more fun things to come. So check it out over there. You can subscribe um, to that to get notified when that comes out. Method number three is to pitch it, basically writing a log line for the scene. Um, you could use an adjusted version of the, pic the Pixar one, which is once upon a time, every day, but then, but then, but then, until. <laughs> you could also do something simple like character wants goal, but conflict, ultimately resolution. Pros, if you're framing the, the log line as like a one sentence um, description of the scene, right? So that is nice and concise. 
it can almost read like a story if you read all of the log lines of the scenes all the way down it can help you understand the progression it also helps you narrow in on cause and effect as well as sort of the through line the central rail of the scene because you've been able to sum it down into something so succinct cons um it might not be enough for some people to write um a scene based off of that because it's just one sentence and writing one sentence or summing up everything you want in one sentence can be surprisingly difficult. Number four is magical cookies. So this is jotting down for every scene what makes you want to write it. Um, so this could be the set piece. Maybe it's a really cool set piece. It could be the banter, the shenanigans, the emotion, Pros here, this should make you excited to start writing the scene and make drafting easier because if you look down at your scene outline, you'll see your magical cookie and you'll ideally get very excited about it. Um, cons, there's no structure to this outlining version. It's just the cool thing you wanna write, which is awesome. But unfortunately, a book cannot be all vibes and banter. At some point, someone's gonna ask you what the character looks like and you're gonna be like, I don't know, I told you 100 pages ago she had brown hair, stop. So something has to change in this scene. Um, so defining that is helpful. Some people might be good with just the magical cookie. This could be good for almost a pantser. Um, but if you're more of a plotter, you might want a little bit more to go on. Basically, it can be easy to lose the plot if you don't write the plot down, you know? Number five is John Truby. So in his book, Anatomy of Story, he gives an outline for a scene. And these are sort of the fields you are filling in, the position on the character arc. So where the character is on the character arc and where they are on their journey. Problem, which is your problem as the writer. So it could be something as like, how do I introduce this character? Um, how do I reveal X information? And then you have your strategy, um, which is how you're going to approach the scene and solve that problem, basically. And then the structure points are desire, the desire that is driving the theme, endpoint, opponent, plan, conflict, twist or reveal, and then moral argument or values. So basically, a character has a desire, the endpoint is the outcome of that desire, opponent is who is trying to keep them from getting the desire. Plan is how the character is going to go about achieving what they want. Conflict is likely coming from the opponent and or environmental forces or internal forces even that is keeping them from being able to get what they want. Twisted reveal is the way you kind of bounce out of the scene. And moral arguments and values is sort of tracking how your theme is developing. Pros for this one. It really encourages you to think globally about where you are in the story and why this scene needs to be in the book. I think that knowing why something is in there and being very intentional is super important as a writer and this structure lends itself to that perfectly. Also, okay, this is my favorite scene construction. It feels organic, but also it is the most desire driven one. And I think that for me at least, thinking of what does the character want and what's in the way, that's your like very basic um, thing of conflict. And even though I know this, I can forget really easily that a character needs to want something in a scene. And as soon as I remember that, and as soon as I identify it, it makes writing it a lot easier. Also, audiences respond and are more engaged when they know a character's goal and they see how they're going after it. Um, maybe one of the cons is Unlike some of the other ones, especially Story Grid, I haven't seen as many examples using this structure. Number six is a screenplay. So this is writing out a mini screenplay of the scene. Um, basically, I got this from Susan Dennard, and basically this is in the order of events as they will happen. You write down dialogue, broad actions, maybe a note or two on the setting, maybe, maybe a line or two of interiority if something comes to you as you're writing it. It basically gives you the bones of the scene. Check out the link below for her examples. When I sit down to start, the page isn't blank. That's why I love it. I know what happens. And so because I know what is going to happen, sort of beat, more or less beat by beat, I can focus in more on the interiority, the emotionality, making the dialogue good, et cetera, et cetera. Some of these other ones, you know what happens, but 
you know, you know your starting point and your end point, but you don't necessarily know what's in the middle. This one is helping you get through what's in the middle, how the characters are moving even, um, what broad actions they're taking, etc. Cons, this is quite time consuming. Um, so I wouldn't front load these completely. And you're not explicitly stating your structure again. So um, you could write a screenplay, but there is no guarantee that that screenplay is going to have the elements of a good scene and is gonna be structured well. All right, number seven is McKee, um, Robert McKee from Story. Now he doesn't offer an explicit scene outline the way Truby does, but he does talk about three things that I think are very helpful in a scene. He talks about the gap, which is um, the gap between expectation and result. So what the character thinks is gonna happen versus what actually happens being your conflict. He talks about the importance of the escalation of risk in a scene, so ramping up the stakes, and the magic if question, which is if I was this character in these circumstances, what would I do? So I would outline a scene basically using this principle by using the magic if um, to write out a series of action, expectation, results action, expectation, results. Pros, for this one, you are super honing in on what that conflict is. There's a lot of causality. It encourages you to think from your POV and other characters' perspectives. And escalating risk equals rising tension. Um, you've plotted out the beats of your scene in detail, very similar to the screenplay, they're all right there. And it's very action focused. Um, so you know that you don't have a passive scene because stuff is happening. Cons. Some might find writing out the beats like this a little bit too detailed, um, especially in such a structure. If you're writing a quieter scene even, not much less novel, it might be hard to identify what actions are happening. It's probably somewhere in there more like a line of dialogue, like X accuses Y. Um, and sometimes I think those can be a little bit difficult to suss out. And number eight is tweet it. This is a really fun scene outlining technique that Michelle Schusterman talks about in one of her videos, which I will link down below. It's basically where you have your character write three to seven tweets about what's going on in the scene, one tweet for each beat, a beat bearing being where something changes in the scene. And this is as if they're like, tweeting in real time like people used to do with the bachelor or whatever they would like real time tweet the episode as it goes out pros for this it is super creative and fun um you get it's good for getting unstuck it helps you think about things from the character's pov cons you're focused on the change which is great and not the structure but the biggest con honestly is that i spent like an hour creating a tweet template in canva so those are eight ways to outline your scenes, how I use these, and I use a combination of all of these different methods at different times, and, but this is kind of how I would organize them in the timeline of your pre-writing process, I guess. So in very early stages of my manuscript, my scenes are really in the pitch it logline form or just their magical cookies. When you're doing global outlining, so what we traditionally think of as outlining, like here are all my scenes, this is what happens in all of them. Freytag, StoryGrid, and Truby are awesome for that. If you are doing kind of just-in-time outlining or more like highlights outlining, um, I would use the screenplay method or the story beat method by, um, by McKee right before I write a scene. And then when you're stuck and don't know what to do, you can try tweeting it. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Keep an eye out for the super long extended um, explanation version. And thank you so much for watching. I'm Nicole Wilbur, see you next time.